What's up everybody, Sergeant First Class Science coming at you again. Uh, again, I'm the team leader for the recruiting team here in Jefferson City for the Missouri Army National Guard. Welcome back to school. I know everything's a little bit crazy, um, but we are gonna do our best to get presentations and information out to you guys uh, with these difficult times. Now today we're gonna talk more, most importantly, about the ASVAB test. A lot of you juniors, seniors, and maybe even some sophomores are gonna be taking this ASVAB test in high school, all right? Your counselors and your faculty are gonna be setting all this stuff up for you through our military entry processing station. And I want you guys to know everything you can about this test so you know that it's not just for military service. That's right, I said it's not just for military service. I'm gonna to explain to you guys a little bit more about the Army National Guard that you might already know. If you don't know, then it'll be good information for you. And I'm also gonna go in depth on what the ASVAB is and why it's important for you guys. All right, so follow along with me. All right, so the National Guard is a unique and essential element of the U.S. military. We're the oldest branch of the military. We were founded in 1636 as a sort of security for the citizens. We were a citizen military unit that was uh, the security for each one of our, our colonies over here. The Missouri National Guard, which was founded in 1808, is a component of the Missouri Department of Public Safety and the National Guard of the United States. and is composed of the Army and the Air National Guard. Now, I particularly am for the Army National Guard, so any questions about the Army National Guard, that's what you bring to me. All right, so service in the Guard. One of the big things that is unique about every state's National Guard is that we have two missions. We have state and federal missions. State missions are obviously going to be for natural disasters, riot control, any kind of community support that we need, and federal missions could be anything from peacekeeping to actual combat missions overseas. So they take us elsewhere when we're called upon. All right, benefits for students. There's a whole lot of benefits that I always talk about, you know, coming ranging from college tuition assistance, extra money, insurance, uh, but some of them that aren't talked about as much are service to country and community. That's a big reason of why I joined. That's a big reason of why I'm a recruiter now and I want to get other people to join. It's just to be a positive member of your communities. All right, Being a part of a proud history, as I told you guys, we are the oldest branch of military, dating back to 1636. Being a part of a winning team. And when I say winning team, I mean we are always here. We're always ready. And we're the most educated branch out there having the education benefits that we have, the benefits that are more advertised travel opportunities. I myself have been to seven different countries uh, over the span of my 15 year career in the Army National Guard and there's always more opportunities depending on what you volunteer for and what job you have for us. Adventure around every corner. Strengthen physical and mental fitness goes along with some of the benefits we have and the PT standards that we have. An experience that you can't gain anywhere else, I promise. All right, so training and education, stuff that's gonna stack up on your resume for you and make you more valuable to employers down the road. All of this training that we talked about up here, specialty training, licenses, certifications, correspondence courses that you do for the military, even your basic combat training will go on your joint service transcript. These are college credit hours. These are certifications that, that can make you valuable to employers, all stuff that's gonna go on your resume. So these are even more things to think about moving forward with your civilian career that you choose. All right, in the Army National Guard, we want you to go to college. We have the benefits that benefit you to go to college, and in turn, they benefit us, having that highly educated soldier that gets those civilian certifications that are gonna help us in any mission that we have. So, me being a recruiter, yes, I want you to enjoy these great benefits, but I also wanna bring someone on our team that wants to stay, and they want to serve in a capacity on the civilian side and on the National Guard side with as much experience and knowledge as possible. One thing to note on here is students, high school students, if you are enlisted, you can use your benefits your senior year for dual credit classes. So if you're taking a college class that costs money, your benefits start right away whenever you're enlisted with us. All right, now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of the ASVAB. What is the ASVAB? The ASVAB is an aptitude test that estimates your capacity for academic and vocational endeavors. All right, it stands for Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It measures developed abilities and helps predict future academic and occupational success. So taking this test, 
Yes, it's for the armed services, but this is going to give a good representation of your knowledge currently and the stuff that you know right now. What's on the ASVAB? There are several different sections of the ASVAB, so I'm going to quickly go through what these sections are and what might be in them. A lot of these are general studies, but some of them are more vocational, so you hopefully will be able to identify those pretty quickly. General science, measuring knowledge of life science, earth and space science, and physical science. Arithmetic reasoning, measuring, measuring ability to solve basic arithmetic word problems. Word knowledge, measuring ability to understand the meaning of words through synonyms. Paragraph comprehension, measuring ability to obtain information from written material. Mathematics knowledge, everyone's favorite. Measuring knowledge of mathematical concepts and applications. Now notice I went over two different math sections that are on this. One thing I think you all need to take note is you cannot use a calculator on this test. So you need to be able to practice these math problems and these equations without using a calculator. So if you can get with your math teacher and go over some of that stuff and let them know that, hey, you want to take the ASVAB and you want to do your best on it, that's something that you can start adding into your studies and your tutors. All right, moving on, electronics information. Measuring knowledge of electrical current circuits, devices, and electric, electronic systems. Auto and shop information. Measuring knowledge of automotive maintenance and repair and wood and metal shop practices. The last two are going to be mechanical comprehension, measuring knowledge of the principles of mechanical devices, structural support, and properties of materials, and assembling objects. Assembling objects is, uh, is kind of a little weirder. It, it, makes you, it makes you think a little bit on how to assemble objects and separate them and figure out what shapes go together. Measuring the ability to determine how an object will look when its, part, when its parts are put together. Now right, we're going to go over a couple sample questions now. I'm going to leave this on the screen and I'm going to read, it, read through it real quick since I don't have a physical audience. I'm not going to ask you for answers, obviously. But I'll have the answer up on the screen. So sample question number one. An eclipse of the sun throws the shadow of the A moon on the sun, moon on the earth, Earth on the sun or Earth on the moon? What do you guys think? Yes, you are correct. It's B, moon on the earth. This was probably a general science question. Sample question number two. If 12 workers are needed to run four machines, how many workers are needed to run 20 machines? This is probably going to incorporate some kind of math, arithmetic reasoning here. You've got to figure out what kind of equation to use to figure out the answer. Is it A, 20, B, 48, C, 60, or D, 80? Good job, you guys. It was C, 60. All right, sample question number three. If 50% of X equals 66, then x equals what? Again, you're going to be coming up with a math equation of some sort to figure out this answer. Figuring out for x. Is it A, 33, B, 66, C, 99, or D, 132? Yes, the answer was D, 132. Sample question number four. Small most nearly means A, sturdy. B, round, C, cheap, or D, little? This is a word knowledge question, and the answer is obviously little. All right, before we talk about how to prep, going through all those questions, they were kind of easy. They weren't too difficult. Some of them on the test may be a little bit more difficult than that, but those are the kind of questions that you're going to get. The equation for X might be a little bit longer than what it was, but you get the idea of what it is. All right? So how to prep for the ASVAB. I want you guys to all do your best on this ASVAB. Whether or not you join the military is completely up to you, but do your best on this test. All right. Study. Study as much as you can. Get tutors if you can. Study with friends. Um, it's very, very important that you do as good as you can on this ASVAB test. Make sure you're well, you are well rested the night before. Stay hydrated. Eat a good breakfast. All three of those come into play with you being of sound mind when you take the test. Make sure you're not 
dizzy or dehydrated or malnourished or anything like that that's going to hinder your thought process in trying to figure out math problems or retain what you read on paragraph comprehension. All right, And do your best. Don't stress. I know a lot of people out there have test anxiety. I have test anxiety myself. But when taking the test, there are four choices for every question. Narrow it down to two. All right? You have a 50% chance at that point of getting that question right. And don't stress about it. If you can narrow it down to two, choose one and move on. Always worry about that next problem once you've finished the, the initial one that you're on. All right, here are some ways, and I'll leave this up on the screen for just a little bit, some ways you can practice or study if you know you want to do the best you can on the ASVAB, which I want you to do. So we have several web, websites up here you can use. ASVABprogram.com, that's one you will use after you've taken the test to review your scores and check uh, all kinds of different occupations that you might be interested in the future. Fortests.com, UnionTestPrep.com, ASVABTutor.com, ASVABTestBank.com is a very good one. I have a lot of my recruits that have used that to in increase their ASVAB score. Some apps that you can use. ASVAB practice, practice Test 2019 has been a good one. ASVAB Practice for Dummies is a very good one. That's actually a book also. That's the book that I used when I retook my ASVAB to get a higher score. If you just go into your apps on your phone and type in ASVAB, there will be many different study apps that you can pull up and use off of there. All right, YouTube. Everyone uses YouTube for everything. If you want to learn something and you're a, a visual person, YouTube is the way to go, especially for math problems. If you type in Momentrix ASVAB or Arithmetic Reasoning into YouTube, you're going to get all kinds of different ideas on, on how to get those math problems done. All right, the books, as I said earlier, ASVAB for Dummies, ASVAB Study Guide, ASVAB Prep Plus, AFOQT. These are all books that you can find at almost any library. Some of your libraries at high school will have these. Other resources, parents, teachers, friends, tutors. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Everyone needs help at some point in time. This could be a team effort for you to get to the best score you can. All right, the day of the test. Read the directions for each subtest carefully before you begin. Read each question carefully before selecting your answer. All right, the instructions, they're going to be read to you. You need to follow along and make sure you understand the instructions of each one. They're all very similar, but if there's any differences, you need to notice them right away. Make sure you read every question in its entirety. That way you're not missing something in it. Pay attention to the time. Each section of the test is timed. Okay, There's plenty of time for everybody to get the test done, but if you were to run out of time and you didn't answer all your questions, then you're just missing all those questions. A guess is better than a blank answer. When you don't know the answer to a question, try to rule out as many incorrect choices as you can and then make an educated guess from the remaining answers. Like I said before, try to narrow it down to two. Why take the ASVAB seriously? All right, you do have to take this test and pass it with a 31 or higher to be considered for military service. You have to get a 31 or higher. Now, with that being said, getting a 31 or higher doesn't mean you will enlist for the job that you want. So you want to do as good as you can on there to qualify for as many jobs as possible. Now, a lot of you are saying, I don't want to join the military. I have no desire to join the military. That's great. Whenever you go to that asvabprogram.com and we're talking about those occupations that you might be interested in the future, this is going to show you if you're qualified for that currently or what you need to do to work toward that job that you want in the future. It's going to be a huge career exploration class that you go through based off of your knowledge currently off this test. So take this test seriously. Why else should you take this test? You're going to learn a lot about yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses. The ASVAB is comparable to the ACT. It'll have, give you a rough estimate of how you would do on the ACT. And whenever you go through your career exploration on the ASVABprogram.com, it'll tell you all about that. It will, that program will also help you map out your after high school plan. Whether you're going to go right to college or right to a tech school or what school is best for you to go to, what school is going to cost you the most or the least, what kind of training or education or certifications you're going to need for that occupation that you want. And yes, this is a long test. You want to do your best, so if you do want to join the military, you try not to take it a second time, unless you just really enjoy taking tests. I don't personally. Realize your strengths, realize your dreams. Any job that you think that you want to do in the future, 
I almost guarantee you we can find you a fit in the Army National Guard, in any branch of the military really, but more specifically to my branch of the military, the Army National Guard. The Missouri National Guard has 140 locations or units to where you could drill one week in a month, and we have 125 or more different jobs or military occupational specialties that you could get trained in, get paid to train in, and be able to add to your resume along with the other degrees and certifications that you're going to get. Whether you want to start working full-time, go to a trade school, two-year college, four-year college, or you have plans of getting a master's degree or doctorate already, there is stuff we can help you out with and there's stuff that you guys can help us out with. We want to help you get that education so you can enjoy a comfortable and successful life down in the future, and we want you to be a good member of our team. The Guard is all about education. Our education benefits are very unique. They're some of the best that you can think of. We have state and federal funding, so that means we have state and federal tuition assistance. We're the only branch that can offer up to 100% of your college paid for, up to the cost of Mizzou, of course. All right, there's also the Montgomery GI Bill and GI Bill Kicker. To get more information on that kind of stuff, you really need to talk to a recruiter about it. So feel free to hit me up anytime. My contact information is going to be up here shortly. A little recap. The Guard is awesome. All right, we already know that. We help out in our communities, we help out for our state, and we help out for our entire country. We make our country great. You should take the ASVAB seriously, whether you're going to join the military or not. Take it seriously and figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. The ASVAB is much more than just a test to see if you can get in the military. There are numerous ways to study for the ASVAB. You guys know a lot of them now. If you have more questions about it, or if you would like this slideshow, I can send it to you at any time. All right, any questions? No, you guys don't have questions because you're not here with me right now. I wish you were, but maybe next time. You can see our contact information up here. Staff Sergeant Ashley Cox is one of my recruiters in the area. She's very helpful. My contact number up here. Feel free to hit me up. I'm also on social media, and uh, your counselors all have my information, I promise you. So when you have questions about the Army National Guard or how to study for the ASVAB, hit us up as soon as possible.